SpaceX has recently unveiled a breathtaking update to the Starship that could turn it into one of the most powerful and versatile rockets ever designed. The monster is expected to take humans to Mars by the end of this decade and become a crucial part of the Artemis mission. Join me in today's video as we explore this awe-inspiring development and its enhancements to the world's mightiest rocket. Starship is extraordinarily ambitious, even before considering the unproven concepts of orbital propellant refilling and full rapid reusability that are central to the full system. Starship is still a wild beast. The rocket measures 120 meters tall and is theoretically capable of producing up to 7,590 tons of thrust at sea level. It's larger, taller, heavier, and more powerful than any other launch vehicle in history. 33 Raptor 2 engines power Starship's Super Heavy Booster, which is more than any other rocket. Once optimized, SpaceX says that Starship can launch up to 150 tons or 330,000 pounds to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines, has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, and produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and it can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expending its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, impressively low, but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Of course, it's not something you can easily have in one sitting. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and can't be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches, and there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they're recovered. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable, whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. Musk likely means that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship with no heat shield or fins and legs for expendable interplanetary launches. Further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and Ship 27 feature no thermal protection, they have no heat shield tiles, and they will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. More likely than not, they'll be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. In early 2023, SpaceX updated the Starship section of its website, revealing that an expendable version of the rocket would be able to launch up to 250 metric tons or 550,000 pounds to low Earth orbit in a single launch. Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons or 260,000 pounds to LEO, and that cost is one to two billion dollars per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms the company's considering all of the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs in at around 420 tons or 925,000 pounds. Two expendable Starships could launch more usable mass to LEO. 
Truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make Starship launches frequent and routine. Apart from these upgrades, SpaceX has also made massive improvements to the Starship engines. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted, marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Before SpaceX shipped in its first Raptor 2 prototype, it manufactured 100 Raptor 1 engines between the start of full-scale testing in February of 2018 and July of 2021. By late 2021 or early 2022, when Raptor 2 took over, the total number of Raptor 1 engines produced likely reached somewhere between 125 and 150. That's impressive, but it pales in comparison to the SpaceX Raptor 2 ambitions. SpaceX strived to make Raptor 2 simpler wherever possible, removing a large part of the maze of primary, secondary, and tertiary plumbing. Despite the decrease in exhaust velocity, the increase in thrust raises the booster efficiency drastically due to reduction in gravity drag. The first 9.8 milliseconds of acceleration is spent purely fighting the Earth's gravitational well. If the thrust to weight ratio is 1.25, well first, 80% of the thrust is wasted fighting gravity and only 20% of the thrust is used to accelerate the vehicle at 0.25 g. Despite just a 25% increase in thrust over a TWR of 1 to 1, this infinitely increases the net work done on the vehicle. Jumping onto a TWR of 1.5, 1, 67% 1, of the thrust is lost to gravity and the other 33% performs work on the vehicle. Despite only a 16% increase in thrust, this increases the work done on the vehicle by 100%. Raptor 1 would have an approximate TWR of 1.25 at liftoff, while Raptor 2 has a TWR of 1.5 at liftoff. This 100% increase in work done at the start of the flight is significantly more important than the 1% decrease in ISP. This has many benefits, like the booster being less far downrange at the end of its burn, decreasing the amount of fuel needed for the booster back burn. Super Heavy will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades the Raptor. The second stage, Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. SpaceX CEO and CTO Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. All SpaceX's efforts will soon pay off in the Starship orbital flight. Last week, the 120-meter rocket was fully stacked on the launch pad at the company's Starbase facility at Boca Chica, Texas. Team is working towards a launch rehearsal next week, followed by Starship's first integrated flight test about a week later pending regulatory approval, SpaceX said on Thursday on Twitter. During the launch rehearsal, which could take place sometime this week, SpaceX engineers will fuel the rocket's first and second stages as though to prepare them for launch, but then the rocket's engine will not actually ignite. If all comes together in time, SpaceX could finally see the Starship rocket fly for the first time. The company's been eagerly awaiting the rocket's inaugural flight for nearly two years, conducting a series of limited static fire tests of the booster's engines. In February, the company performed the first full-scale static fire test of the Starship system, which SpaceX officials declared as the last box to check before the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. During its orbital test flight, the rocket will blast off and the upper stage will perform less than a full orbit around Earth, then re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. It's true, Elon Musk has thrown out launch dates for Starship's test flight before that never materialized, but SpaceX seems to have most of the requirements in order this time around, save that for that coveted launch license. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.